Uh, let's get started. Let me get the screen turned on and the lights adjusted. Sorry for the delay. My microphone was being a little, uh, little cantankerous this morning. Um, okay, so uh, no real big ticket reminders or announcements for today. Uh, just remember that your homework six is due Friday on the cart. Um, there was a question I got a second ago about uh, what problem was it, two or three, about the shears, uh, about the, the loads on the beam. There was a dead load and a live load. Do you factor those loads? The answer is yes, you do. Uh, so make sure that you're applying all your appropriate load factors, 1.2s for deads, 1.6s for lives, et cetera. Um, just remember, uh, as of now, we still don't need to meet on uh, Friday, March 16th. I'm still saying as of now because I assume we're going to be fine in terms of weather, but um, if everything goes well, we shouldn't need to meet. Um, today, what we're going to do is we're going to continue on with shear. Um, we're going to do one more example. This example is going to be a little different because there's concentrated loads uh, in effect. So the shear diagram gets a little more complicated. The process doesn't change uh, in terms of, of how you actually design for shear, but you just need to be aware of what you're doing in terms of, uh, of, utilizing, uh, whoop, uh, of utilizing your shear diagrams uh, and so on and so forth. So let me go back to the PowerPoint. Now I, I, wanna, I want to sort of again recap the procedure because if you, have a, if you have an idea of the procedure in your head, I think you'll understand how the design process works. Today's example, we're going to follow the procedure a little more strictly. In the previous example, when we were doing the distributed load, we produced like three or four different designs using different spacings and so on and so forth. And the reason for that was, was from a learning experience so that you would understand how you space that out. You know, you take your, your, um, your first increment at two inches and then you go two, you know, four inches up until such a distance and then 12 inches until such a distance and so on and so forth. I wanted you to understand those computations. Today's going to be pretty much start to end. Here, here's how you do it. So I, I think this one will be a, a little more straightforward. So again, step one is always to construct the shear diagram. Remember, there are three regions of interest. Um, anywhere that VU is greater than or equal to VVC, anywhere that VU is less than half of VVC, and everywhere in between. Remember, region one is when you've got to have stirrups for strength requirements. Region three is when you don't need them at all. And the region in the center is where the concrete can basically carry the shear on its own, but you're still providing stirrups for... Um, uh, for a, from a capacity standpoint just for, for safety. Even though you don't really need them for capacity, you put them there for, for safety considerations. Um, for our design, for actually laying them out, uh, the first thing that we do is we calculate our S value to begin our design, and that's typically calculated at VU star. Remember, that's the factored shear at X equals D. That's where that uh, end shear reduction is permitted, a D away from the support. We then can improve upon uh, our resulting design by uh, incorporating S max. So, you know, we, we, at the very least, we're going to have two increments of stirrup spacing. We're going to have our S required and our S max. If you want to throw something uh, in the middle, in between those two, you're, you're, you're absolutely more than welcome to. Um, you don't want to get too crazy with it depending upon your application, but know that you can always reduce the amount of stirrups uh, accordingly. Um, <laughs> once we determine uh, our S ma uh, basically S max, if we're only going to use two stirrup spacings, S required and S max, we go back to our shear diagram to figure out where can we, be where can we begin uh, placing stirrups. So we basically solve for X. Once we've got that, we can lay out the stirrups for the beam. Um, you know, our first stirrup is usually placed uh, a half a stirrup spacing uh, away from the support or, or two inches. Two inches is very common. So that's that for... Uh, unless otherwise noted, two inches is probably what we will use just to keep everything simple and straightforward. Uh, as a final step, you'll need to check this, but this usually is never uh, this check is never usually never violated, at least for the uh, the loads and the um, at least for the loads and the the, the parameters we're talking about. Now, 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 this is the example we did last time, and we produced a few different designs. Each design got more and more economical. Again. The purpose was so that you all would understand how to lay out stirrups. This example that we're doing today is a little more on the straightforward side, a little, a little more direct, you know, start to finish. Now, 
What makes this example uh, a little more complicated is the loading. We are not dealing with a beam that just has a distributed load. We have distributed loads and point loads. So our shear diagram is going to have some jumps in it. And because it has some jumps in it, some discontinuities, how we handle the layout of shear and how we uh, select certain points and figure out where certain values are, we got, we got to be a, a little careful with that. So, uh, but don't worry, we'll, we'll take our time with it. Now, I'm going to be lazy and screen clip this. Um, but it's true. Working smart, not working hard, right? Oh, goodness. Squanch that a bit. I'm going to lower it. I'm going to drop that down a little bit. There we go. Okay. So this is an example that we're doing in class today. So example, this is example 14. Okay. Now let me, um, let me write down some parameters for the beam. Just so everybody has this uh, handy. So we have uh, FC prime is 3 KSI, and this is normal weight concrete, so what does that mean? Lambda is 1. We'll go ahead and uh, throw that out there. Um, we have a yield stress for the stirrups of 60 KSI. Now as for the beam, the beam is 10 inches wide and its effective depth is let's say 20 inches or yeah it's 20 inches and its length is 24 feet or 288 inches okay now we're using number three u-shaped stirrups or I didn't put the three there got ahead of myself number three u-shaped stirrups So what does that mean? Like what that, that affects our AV. What is that? 0.22. So if it, it, because it's U, we're because it's U-shaped, we've got two uh, bars. Okay. Now, like I said, I'm going to follow the procedure a little more directly with this example. I am going to take a couple like shortcuts, if you will, on the shear diagram, and I think that'll make sense when we get into it. I want to show you a couple different ways that we can generate some of the equations for this, uh, uh, this shear diagram. Now, first thing we do have to do, we do have to actually construct the shear diagram. Now, this is one of, if not the most work-intensive uh, steps in the whole process is to actually get a shear diagram that makes sense. But it's not even so much just the shear diagram, it's the equations for the shear diagram. Now, you all have had structural analysis, so help me begin. How do I draw the shear diagram? But you know what? Let's ignore all these equations and, 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 and y equals mx plus b and all this stuff. Let's just do the shear diagram. How do you draw the shear diagram for this beam? Tell me what step one is. Just get a straight edge. <laughs> now, what was that? Find the, find the reaction forces. So we do need to find the reactions. Now, are the reactions going to be equal? Yeah. yeah, they're going to be because everything's symmetric. We have symmetric loading and a symmetric geometry. So we're going to have whatever this reaction is and whatever this reaction is, they are the same. Now, can anybody tell me a simple way of computing what this reaction is? Like let's handle the like let's say the distributed load didn't exist. Let's say the distributed load didn't exist. What would the reactions be? 20 kips. So I got 20 kips from each of these. How do I compute the uh, reaction due to this distributed load? Now I can sum moments if you all want. I, I, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. But I figure let's just keep it simple. You tell me what to write. Okay. All right. All right. So. Let's do that symbolically. So the reaction is WL plus 2PU, that's all the load on the beam, divided by 2. Does that make sense? 
or we could just write W L over two plus P. Like that, that'll work too. That subscript. Is everybody okay with this? Like, you, I didn't just come up with this formula from outer space, right? Pretty straightforward. Okay, so plug and chug, we get four kips per foot times 24 feet divided by two plus 20 kips is what? 68 kips. Do I have a second on that? Okay, all right. Now, now that we've got that, let's go ahead and draw our shear diagram out. Now, we're going back to regular old structural analysis. So, I'm going to draw this out. Okay. So, Those are about the straightest vertical lines I've ever drawn. I can't believe that. Okay. All right. So this is the shear diagram, and it's going to be in kips. Okay. Now we're bringing it back a little bit. So you tell me what to do. Starting over here on the left side, what do I do? Go up 68, right? So we start over here, and we say, bam. We go up 68, right? Now what do I do? Does this go horizontal like that? No, it doesn't. What does it do? Slopes downward. Now how far down do we go? We're at here. We go down, what, four kips per foot for a distance of six feet? So what, how, how, what's the total change going down? 24, right? So if I'm at 68 and I go down 24, what's that put me at? 44, right? So that goes down something about like this. And that puts me at 44. Then what do I do? I go down, I drop down suddenly 20, and I'm at 24, right? Okay. Now what happens between, so let's just keep this simple. What happens between here and here, here in the center? drops to what? To zero, and then here it's negative 24. Bless you. So from here to here, it goes to negative 24. So let's see if I can draw this appropriately. Uh, cross your fingers. Oh, I already messed it up. That's about the best you're getting out of me. All right, and then that's negative 24. And then from here on out, the shear diagram sort of mirrored, but it's mirrored negatively, right? All right. So this goes down to negative 44. That goes down like that. And then this goes up. So negative 44, negative 68. Is everybody okay with that? Now, one of the things that we're allowed to do in shear, in shear design, especially because the beam is symmetric and the loading is symmetric, is we only have to consider half the beam. And I'm sure some of you are thinking, well, wait, some of the shears are positive and some of the shears are negative. Does that really matter? The answer is no, not really, at least from a design standpoint. Because whether or not you're taking a beam and doing this, or doing that, you're still sort of doing the same thing to it. The only difference is, is really sort of your, your perspective. Am I looking at the beam like this, or am I look at it, looking at it like that? I'm still doing the same thing to the beam. So it really doesn't, uh, really doesn't matter. But one of the reasons I, I, I wanted to draw the shear diagram uh, and actually drew, draw it out the way that we used to do it in structural analysis is because I want to make a very specific point. Every region in the shear diagram is defined by a line, right? Everybody okay with that? What is the slope of these lines? What's the slope? Four, not, well, not, not four. Negative four, right? Because it's going down, right? Because remember, when you plot a shear diagram, remember, 
This is sort of right here. This is sort of your y-axis. And this, this is sort of your x-axis, right? And what you're plotting, like this diagram is essentially the shear. This is the shear, but it's plotted on that axis. So, so what I'm getting at, each of these lines, each of these lines right here have a slope. And the slope is minus 4 kips per foot. Remember, remember that relationship for shear diagrams? The slope of the shear diagram is equal to the load. Y'all remember that? Okay. Now, if you remember that, let's make it even a little simpler. All right? If all I care about, here, let me, let me just go up here. If all I care about is defining equations for, let's say, this left half of the beam, because everything on the right half of the beam, the magnitudes are the same. So all I need to worry about is everything over here. Would you agree that I need two equations? I need an equation from x equals 0 to x equals, what, 6 feet? And from x equals 6 feet to x equals 12 feet? You all remember that? Having two equations? So let's take this one at a time, okay? I propose, let's see if we can map this one with, we'll call it equation 1. Let's see if we can map this one with equation 2. All right, let's look at equation 1. What is the slope of that line? It's minus 4 kips per foot, right? Make sense? Now, if this is a line, y equals mx plus b, well, we know the slope. What is the y-intercept of that line? R, or 68 kips, right? So, therefore, I propose that the equation for this line is... 68 kips minus 4 kip per foot times x. Would that be a fair statement? That's not bad, right? Pretty straightforward. Now let's do the next one. This is where you got to pay attention, okay? Now, m is still minus 4 kips per foot. Now, what about the y-intercept? Can anybody tell me what the y-intercept of line number two is? No, no. That, that's a good, what'd you say? You're right. This is the y-axis, okay? The y-axis didn't move here. The y-axis is still here. The question is, where does this line cross the y-axis? So if that's 24, watch this. You know, we're going, do, 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 do that is 48. Does that make sense? Everybody okay with that? So if this is 48 kips, I propose that that is 48 kips minus 4 kips per foot times x. Does that make sense? Now, Let's make sure that we're clear. This equation is only valid from 0 feet to 6 feet. This equation is only valid from 6 feet to 12 feet. Well, I mean, it actually is valid for, for past that. This equation, uh, equation number 2, would, would actually work all the way over to 18 feet, but we really don't care because once we get here, we're good. Make sense? And, and if, again, if, if you're ever concerned or if you're ever unsure, break out Excel. So we have X and V. So we'll have one equation going 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then the second equation 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. What was the first equation? 68 minus 4x? Right? And that's valid all the way to here. And this equation, 48 minus 4 times x. Bam. And then highlight that 
and insert a scatter plot. That's exactly what it should look like, right? Goes up to 68, slopes down, jumps, slopes down, right? So you always have the ability to check to make sure these equations are right. Everybody okay with this? Did I go too fast on the Excel or is everybody good? Okay, all right. And again, you can always hit pause and on the recording, you know, hit that subscribe button, right? Make sure you hit the notify bell. That was a joke. Oh my goodness. <laughs> all right. Bless you. All right, everybody good on this so far? Okay, so we've got the equations necessary to plot our shear diagram, but in order to plot it appropriately, we need uh, concrete capacities, right? So we need to calculate VVC and, and all that jazz, okay? So can I go ahead and move on to the next panel? Okay, all right. So so before we exit step one, let's look at our concrete capacity. Okay, concrete capacity. So, how do I compute VC? Make sure everybody's paying attention. I'll start you. It's two. There we go. All right. So, tell me what to write. So, we have two times what's lambda? One. What's B? D is. And the square root of what? No. 3,000. PSI. Remember, you plug in PSI, you get out PSI. So, somebody do the math, say to the nearest you know, number or nearest integer or whatever, what are we getting? 21,909, and what is that? No. It's, this is PSI, but the, see, this, this is where, yeah, th this is an easy mistake to make. And it's not that big of a deal. It really isn't. But this is one of those things where on an exam, like the, that unit, it'll just, it'll carry and drive you crazy throughout the rest of the problem. This is in pounds. So the square root of PSI, that will yield PSI, but then you got it multiplied by inches and by inches. So that'll be pounds. So converted 21.909 kips. Okay. So what's... VVC. What do I what do I do here? 0.75. Phi is 0.75 always for shear. That's you know. Remember what what is phi for bending? It depends, right? It depends on what the strain in the steel is. But for shear, it's always 0.75. So 0 0.75 times 21.909. Say it again. 16. Point what? Four, three, uh, kips. Do I have a second on that? And any other values we need to go ahead and compute? Half of VVC. So half that of 16.43 kips, and that's what? 8.22 kips. Second on that? Okay. Now, here's where you got to start paying attention, okay? So, Remind me, and, and I'm just, just for the sake of discussion, or, or for the sake of making sure we're all clear on what's going on, I'm just going to leave some units off. So we have a shear equation that looks like this. So we've got, what, 68 minus 4x and 48. Is it 68 minus 4x and 48 minus 4x? 68 and 48. Okay. This one is valid from 0 feet to 6 feet. And this is valid from 6 feet to 12 feet. Everybody with me on this? Okay. Now, we have three values, or three values that we need to plot for shear. So, important values. Okay, so let's make sure we're clear. So, first one is VU star. Now, that's the shear at x equals d. So 
First off, which equation do we use? The first one or the second one? First one, why? So, okay, here we go. So D is 20 inches, which falls in between the first range, right? So you don't use the first or the second equation to calculate VU star because go back to your shear diagram, okay? On your shear diagram, we're talking about shears. We're talking about the shear like right here, okay? So don't use equation number two because we're not talking about that range. It's the shear at X equals D. Remember, it's D away from the support, and D is only like 20 inches. So, so does it make sense while we're using the first equation? Okay. Now, let's go ahead and calculate this out. So 68 kips minus 4 kips per foot times D is what, 20 inches? What's wrong? Units. So 1 foot, 12 inches. So what does this come out to be? Say it again. 57.3? I got 61. Uh-oh. Yeah, 64. Is that what it is? Yeah, that, that's easy. All right. Any questions on that? Okay. Now. What, what, what's the next, what are the other two values that we have to compute? We have to compute X at VVC and X at half of VVC. Now, what, what are VVC and half of VVC? They're like, what, 16 kips and 8 kips? Something like that? So, let's go back. What equation do I use, one or two? Two, right? Because Look at equation two. It starts at 24 and it goes down to zero. We're looking for where on this shear diagram does what uh, 16 and 8 occur? It, you know, where is 16 and 8? It's going to be somewhere in here, right? So this is where you got to, you know, use a little bit of common sense and make sure that you're computing things appropriately. Does that make sense? So everybody okay with this? Now, in order to compute this, where is my pen? Okay. I'm going to take this equation up here and I'm going to solve for x. Okay. And what I'm getting is this. I'm getting, so 48 kips minus VVC over 4 kips per foot. Is everybody okay with that? So we've got, so just so if you see, if you want to see how I'm doing that. I've got V equals 48 minus 4X, so V plus 4X equals 48, 4X equals 48 minus V, so X equals 48 minus V over 4. Y'all see how I did that? Everybody okay with that? Like I didn't want to go too fast, I just want to make sure, see where I'm getting this. Okay, so 48 kips minus 16.43 kips over 4 kips per foot is what? 7.89 what? Feet. So how many inches? 94.7 inches. Do I have a second on that? Okay, let me see if I can raise that up a bit. So 48 kips minus half of VVC over 4 kips per foot. So 48 kips minus 8.22. And what does that come out to be? So 9.95 feet, do I have a second on that? And what is that in inches? It's like 100 something. 119.4, by the cap? 
Luckily, as you've seen by now, this isn't as hypersensitive to rounding as some of the other stuff we've done before because our stirrup increments are going to be like four inches, six inches, so they're probably going to cross over the, these regions. So it's not going to be that big of a deal. So, um, actually, sorry. Everybody okay with this? Okay. Let me go on to the other panel and let's actually construct the shear diagram. So. This is where having a straight edge helps. There's a tool here on this screen that will allow you to draw the straight edge, but oh goodness, I'm, I'm not breaking it out. Okay. So our shear diagram, give me one second and we'll try and make it somewhat neat. It's going to look something like this. Okay, so that's sort of what our shear diagram looks like. Um, now we have a cutoff right here. So and then that's that dashed portion. Okay. So My scale's a little off, but you can kind of see what's going on. This is 68 kips, and uh, you, we can say that's R if you want to, um, if you want the value. Now this is VU star, and this is 61.33. Did I get that right? Okay. And that's at a distance of 20 inches. Okay. Now this is this jump here. This is 44 kips, and that's 24 kips, right? Did I, did I get that right? Okay. And then we've got. Okay, so that right there, that's VVC is, what, 16.43, is that what it is? And this is half of VVC, which is 8.22 kips. And this is 94.7 inches. This is... 119.3 inches. And what was this? What's that? 72 inches. Okay. Now, in terms of regions, uh, let's see what we've got. So, we've got this, this, Okay, now this one, that's the center line of the beam. I can do better than that. That's the center line of the beam. In here, what's going on in this region over here on the right? No stirrups needed. This region right here is where the concrete carries the shear. It's basically saying the same thing. That's this is really more of our gut check that when it's all said and done, if we don't have S max in this region, we did something wrong. So, and this region over here on, over here, this is where stirrups are needed. Okay. So when it's all said and done place stirrups from x equals 0 to x equals 119.3.
And I know some of you are probably going to think that, well, well, is it really necessary to draw this shear diagram if I've got all my values and my data? Can I just look at the equations and see? With enough experience, yes. But I'll go ahead and tell you, there's a problem on the homework assignment where it really will help to have the actual image. And I don't want to spoil anything, but you'll see what I mean. Um, but yeah, we need to place stirrups from x equals 0 to x equals 119.3. So that there's a couple takeaways. We need to make sure that our resulting design, when it's all said and done, has stirrups from x equals 0 to x equals 119.3. We know this region over here needs S max, but a large chunk of the beam, we actually need some serious stirrup layout. Okay? Everybody okay with this? Okay. Any questions so far? Like, like I said, I know that this is a long part of the, uh, the problem. It gets a little better from here. So we're actually almost, I'd say we're close to being half, we're over halfway done with this example. I know, step one takes about half the time. Everybody good? All right. So, okay. So step two is our starting S value. So our starting S value, we get S required is, you tell me what to write. There we go. Okay. And remember, all that is is just taking VVN has to be greater than or equal to VU. Vs is V F Y D over S and just solving. It, it, it's just algebra. It's really nothing, nothing magical. So, so we have 0 0.75, 0 0.22 square inches. We have what was it? Was it 60 ksi? Yeah. And D was 20, if our yeah. memory serves. Now V U star that one was 61. 0.33 kips and VVC was what? 16.43. Do I multiply by V right here? No, I, I already incorporated that in, in the calculation. That's an easy mistake to make. It's like, oh, I, I've got a, a, you know, my multiplying by V twice. Just make sure you don't do that. Now, what are we getting when we compute this out? Hmm. I, I got a little different. I got four point four point four one. Do I have a second? Okay. So from a design standpoint, what should we use? Four inches. Yeah. So let's use S equals four inches. Now we could stop right now and design our beam. And, and go home. But we know that we can improve that. We saw that in the last example, that we can improve the design by using another increment of spacing. And what's the other increment? S max. So we know that there's a region where we wouldn't need all these terms. So let's calculate S max. So maximum S value. Okay, so We've got two values, so we have S max 1 is the minimum of D over 2, or 24 inches, right? So minimum of 20 inches over 2, or 24 inches, which comes out to be what? Say it again. 10 inches, right? Now... We need to go ahead and compute 0 0.75 times the square root of FC prime, which is 0 0.75 times the square root of 3,000. Which is what? Do I have a second on that? 
just remember we're doing that because our second limit on stirrup spacing states that we're, we compute that by taking AV uh, times FY, dividing it by B times the maximum of these two values. So what's the maximum of that in 50, for our example? 50. So that's, that's why we do that. So. so S max 2 is... A V F Y T B W times fifty PSI. So tell me what to write. What goes up top? Zero point two two inches squared. F Y sixty thousand. Again, write that letter P, write the letter S, write the little letter I. Put the dot on top of the I. Make sure that you're writing all that out. B W is what? That's just 10 inches. If this was a T-beam, that'd be the width of the web, so just make sure you're cognizant of that. That's 50 PSI. So what are we getting? Twenty-six point four inches. Do I have a second on that? Yeah. All right, so of these two, what am I going to use? No. No. The 10. Does that make sense? What's the worst, what's the more conservative option using 10 inches or 26 or something? It's the 10 inches, right? That's, that's what's going to govern. Now, what's left? Are we missing, can we go ahead and start laying out our stirrups now or are we missing something? A range, right? Because, but think about this, right? What are we going to do? We're going to place our first stirrup at 2 inches, right? Then we're going to use 4 inches until where? Until we can start using 10 inches, right? We don't know when we can start using 10 inches because we've got to determine what's the capacity. So let's do this. All right, so 3, or sorry, step 4 is determine range. Four. S equals 10 inches. Because think, we know that we're going to start our design with 4 inch spacing. We got to know when we can start using the 10 inches. Make sense? Okay. So how do I do that? What do I do with this S value? What's the first thing I compute? VS. So that's AV, FY, D over S, which is 0.22. I can go ahead and use 60 KSI here because I'm not, I don't have any square roots or anything. And then this is 20 over 10, right? What am I getting here? 26.4 what? Do I have a second on that? Now what do I do? If I got VS, what can I then compute? Well, I'm missing something. VVN. I, I need to know what the capacity is. So VVN is VVC plus VVS. So that is, what was VVC again? What was that? 16.43? Uh, plus 0 0.75 times 26.4 kips. And what does that come out to be? Say it again. 36.23 kips. Do I have a second on that? Okay. And now what do I compute? Okay. Which equation do I use? I'll give you a hint. It's a trick question. Now, now, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's make sure that we understand what's going on. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to figure out 
where this value occurs on the shear diagram, right? Where does phi Vn occur on the shear diagram? At the jump, right? So if you start mindlessly plugging into equations, you're going to get some answers that are kind of weird. In fact, if your values come out the right way, you're like you can even get negative values for x, and you're like, what the heck's going on? Because think, this line, if you use the equation for this line, it's going to trail back and figure out where 36 is. And depending upon the values, you can even go all the way back here. But just use some common sense. Where does 36 kit, was it 36.23? Where does 36.23 fall on the shear diagram? It's right here, right? So I propose that therefore, X at PVN is 72. Does that make sense? And the reason is because of that concentrated load. So you, you got to be cognizant. You can't, uh, you, you know, if you, th this, is, this is one of those methods where if you start mindlessly, just, oh, I got to plug that value into X, you can get some strange answers, okay? Because the equations are just plotting that line, but remember that line is only valid for a certain range. So you got to be aware of that. Any questions? Okay. Now, let's do a design. Okay. Now, how now how do I do this? Yeah. I don't know what you're asking. Um, that's the cutoff for the, uh, the max, right? Isn't there? Yeah. So uh, right there, the shear goes up. It starts out at 44 cents, right? Like that on the shear. I don't know. Where it jumps. So technically, there's more shear than so it makes a tangent there. Bear with me. Okay. Bear with me. I think I'll answer your question. Just give me a sec. Okay. okay. Let's do a design, and I think I'll answer what you're asking. I, I, I'll answer your ask. Now, I'm going to verbally write this out like I've done before. So what are we going to do? We're going to place our first stirrup at 2 inches, right? Then we're going to use 4-inch spacing. Until when? 72 inches. Then what? Use 10 inch spacing until x equals what? See for everybody, what's the number we should have kept in the back of our head? 119.4. Everybody with me? Okay, so tell me, tell me what to do. So we have one stirrup at two inches, and that's two inches. Then we're going to use four-inch spacing. How many increments do we need? Is 10 increments enough? 10 times 4 is 40. So that'll only get us to 42. That's not enough. How many do we need? 18. And that's what? 18 times 4 is 72. So, so going back to your question, I don't think, I think I get what you're asking. And the answer is, I don't think it really matters because that stirrup increment straddles that point. So it doesn't really matter. Does that, that kind of answer? Okay, so this is x equals 2. This is x equals 74. Now, at 10 inch increments, how many stirrups do we need? We need five, right? So five at 10 inches, that's 50 inches. That'll get us at x equals 124. We couldn't use four because that would only be 114. It wouldn't be far enough. So that's what, 18 and five, 23? That's 24 stirrups for 124 inches or 
48 total. So that is our design. I'd, try, I'd go across. I'd add one more. Now, that never happens. Like, it falls right on there. But going to what he said, like, it's possible that if you have a concentrated load that a stirrup falls right on that load. So would I go one more? I would. I'd go one more. To ensure that I've got a region that completely encompasses where that load is. I would. What do you, hey, hold on. Are there any questions? Did this make sense? Okay. Here's what we're going to do. I want everybody to pay attention. This is what we're going to do on Wednesday. Okay? On Wednesday, I want everybody to come prepared with any questions that you may have on the impending homework that's due on Friday. Okay? Um, if there are none, what we're going to do is this. We're going to start deflections. Now, in order to start deflections, there's a topic that we talked about way back when. Remember cracking moments? We kind of have to bring cracking moments up again. So we might use Wednesday as a little bit of review to make sure everybody remembers cracking moments. So when we come back from spring break, we're going to hit the ground running with, uh, with deflections. That's all I got, guys. I will see you all on Wednesday.